Australia owns nearly the entire continent of Oceania, but most of its land is dying. Turning fertile soil into dust is easy, but bringing it back to life is an almost impossible battle. Yet right in the middle of the driest continent on Earth, Australia has taken a surprising step to revive its soil, helping a plum farm boost its yield by 37% with each fruit weighing almost 50% more. Don't jump to conclusions. The story you're about to hear might shock you even more. Two-thirds of Australia's territory has fallen into severe land degradation three times the global average. Imagine if the U.S. lost farmland equal to three times the size of Nebraska, what kind of panic would that cause? For Australia, this is daily reality. As the driest inhabited continent, Australia is sinking into the biggest land crisis in the Southern Hemisphere. Every year, billions of tons of fertile topsoil are blown or washed away from barren interiors to even prosperous states like New South Wales. The devastating wildfires of 2019-2020 made things worse. More than 44.5 million acres of forest, twice the size of Florida, were reduced to ash. The soil could no longer hold rainwater, thousands of farms were wiped out, and hundreds of animal species lost their habitats. Nature isn't the only culprit. Humans have made things worse. Over-extraction of groundwater has led to soil salinity and erosion eats away at the topsoil. Then there's the brutal drought. At one point, Sydney got less than an inch of rain over several months while temperatures hit 104 degree rounds. If California's drought once alarmed America in Australia, the desperation is multiplied many times over. We just talked about Australia's fields cracking like deserts, but soil isn't the only wound. Did you know Australia raises over 70 million sheep? That's fewer than China's 194 million. But Australia still produces 45% of the world's wool. In other words, for every two luxury wool sweaters in the world, one is made from Australian fiber. This isn't by chance. Since 1790, Merino sheep were brought from South Africa to Australia adapted to the harsh climate and produced the world's finest, softest fiber. People say no other natural or synthetic fiber can match Australian merino. Australian wool isn't just used for bedding or home goods, it's the heart of global luxury fashion, from high-performance coats and luxury underwear to elite sportswear. But after peaking at 2,000 AUD per ton in 2018-2019, Wool prices plunged to just 800 AUD per ton. Prices dropped so low that many farms couldn't even cover the cost of shearing a must to keep sheep from dying of heat. Can you imagine sheep survive thanks to shearing? But now farmers have to choose shear and lose money or don't shear and risk the sheep dying. Thousands of tons of wool piled up in cold storage across New South Wales and Victoria. Some desperate farmers unable to afford storage burned or buried mountains of wool wasting resources and causing pollution. Many just kept the wool in storage, hoping for prices to rise, but who can afford to keep stockpiling month after month, year after year? Australians came up with a way to use this material to save their land. Sounds crazy since wool and soil seem unrelated, but keep reading to see what they did. The first solution started right on small farms. Farmers collected surplus wool, cleaned off the dust, and put it through special thermal presses. The process sounds simple but requires precise heat and pressure to create wool pellets about the size of a fingertip. Inside each tiny pellet is the keratin structure of wool, which lets it absorb up to 20 times its weight in water and slowly release it into the soil. In Australia, where average annual rainfall is even lower than much of Arizona, these mini water tanks are as precious as gold. But the pellets don't just hold water, they're also natural, slow-release nutrient packs. When buried in the soil, they gradually release about 16% nitrogen, 3-4% sulfur, and trace minerals like copper zinc and iron essential for healthy root growth. Unlike chemical fertilizers that can shock plants and run off into water supplies, wool pellets provide steady nutrition for up to six months without polluting the soil. After the catastrophic 2019-2020 wildfires, many farmers spread these pellets on scorched land, and within weeks, green shoots sprang up like magic. 
Alongside pellets, some farms used wool mulch, spreading cleaned, shredded wool two to four inches thick around plant bases. This method needs no special machinery, just cleaned wool torn up and spread thickly. The mulch cools the soil by 6-10 degree year during hot summer days and retains moisture far better than straw or bark, which American farmers often use. The most surprising benefit natural snail and slug resistance, the tiny barbs on wool fibers irritate their slimy skin, forming a biological fence that protects plants without chemicals. Many home gardeners reported that after just one season of wool mulch, they barely needed to buy slug bait anymore. What do you think happens to old wool blankets and out of fashion sweaters? The landfill, not in Australia. They're reborn in ways you'd never expect. Instead of tossing them co-ops and community gardens, collect shred and mix them with food scraps, vegetable peels, coffee grounds, even stale bread, then compost the mix in sealed bins for eight to 10 weeks. What seems like a stinky mess turns into compost rich in balanced NPK plus zinc manganese and other valuable micronutrients. The result, farmers are amazed tomatoes turn deep red cucumbers are crisp and green yields soar and flavors are noticeably richer. It doesn't stop there. Australian businesses have developed wool-based liquid fertilizers. The process chop the wool, soak it in mild alkaline solution, then filter out an amino acid rich liquid. This fertilizer can be sprayed directly on leaves or soil doesn't corrode tanks and especially helps plants photosynthesize better and resist drought. Compared to hauling and spreading heavy chemical fertilizers, a small can of wool-based liquid fertilizer is far more convenient and totally safe. If those numbers are just hints, real-world trials show wool isn't just an idea, it's a sustainable, high-potential solution. In Victoria, full-scale farm trials have delivered stunning results. After just one season, plum yields rose 37%, and each fruit weighed nearly 49% more. For strawberries, the miracle was even clearer. The berries grew bigger, juicier, sweeter, and stayed fresh twice as long as those grown on regular soil. One farm owner exclaimed, I've never seen my berries travel so far and stay this plump. Markets as far as Sydney and Melbourne love them more than ever. It's not just the fruit. The soil in test plots changed dramatically. pH balanced to ideal levels, the soil became looser and held moisture much better than control plots. Scientists measured clear increases in micronutrients like zinc, copper, and manganese. This means roots no longer have to struggle for nutrients. They grow deeper, thicker, and stronger. Wool's story doesn't end at home. It's been brought to some of the harshest places on Earth. Take Norway heavy rain and cold winds turn mountain trails into water channels. When thin grass is trampled, the soil is exposed, rain washes it away, and hikers are forced to walk on the sides making erosion worse. The usual fix is geotextile fabric. But after a few years, these plastic sheets surface break down into microplastics and blow everywhere. Facing this, the Ascent Project chose an ancient sustainable fix lay thick raw wool under the trail then cover it with gravel. Over 10 years later, the trails are still stable, no plastic bits, while trails with synthetic fabric needed constant repairs. Now head to Mongolia, where the Gobi Desert stretches with fierce sandstorms and wild temperature swings day to night differences can hit 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Planting here is nearly impossible. The soil lacks micronutrients, winds up root seedlings, and desert grass covers just 1% of the land. Mongolian scientists tried applying between 2 and 11 tons of wool fertilizer per hectare, and a miracle happened. After just one season, plant cover jumped from 1% to 50 to 60%, and species diversity rose 40%. On land where barely a weed could survive now, wildflowers, grasses, and native shrubs green the dry sand. This outperformed any mineral fertilizer ever tested, which is easily blown away and leaves side effects. Back in Australia, when global wool markets crashed, many farms seemed doomed. But that's when wool opened up a whole new path. Before the Wool Regenerate Soil Initiative, many Australian farmers had to spend thousands of dollars a year 
just to dispose of surplus wool a burden that ate up 15% of operating costs. But as pellet liquid fertilizer and mulch factories sprang up, the cash flow flipped what used to cost money to get rid of became a commodity. In 2024 alone, Victoria saw over 40 startups recycling wool, creating about 2,500 local jobs. From each ton of waste wool workshops can produce nearly 2,000 pounds of pellets, selling for three times the price of raw wool turning farm waste into a multi-million dollar value chain. It's not just about money. In small towns like Dubbo and Orange, seasonal fairs now feature regenerative wool booths, where kids learn to mix wool with kitchen scraps to make compost, and visitors can try making wool pellets. Many schools have added wool science to after-school programs teaching kids how to test soil moisture and nutrients after applying wool. One farm owner said, wool used to just make sweaters, now it's tied to every meal and every garden row we have. The results wool brings aren't just Australia's success, they're a signal to a drying planet. Picture Africa's Sahel, where the Sahara expands by miles every year being greened by what was once considered trash. Or the Middle East drier than Arizona keeping crops moist without billion-dollar irrigation. Even in western cities from New York to San Francisco, wool compost can turn tiny urban gardens into green oases, cutting both fashion waste and chemical fertilizers at once. This story isn't just about Australia, it's a reminder that anything can be the key to saving the planet. What do you think could a strand of wool change the world? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next amazing discovery.